Welcome back to the workshop build series. If I had to choose two tools that I use more than anything else, it would be the drill and the impact driver. I use these two tools almost every time I walk into the shop. So I want to put these into a French cleat storage system that will be easy to use and, uh, and look nice. So let's jump into that build right now. So here are my thoughts. I have this piece of three quarter inch plywood here and I think it's gonna be the perfect size. Now, my drills are uh, pretty old, so you can see they use the old 18 volt battery that's really big. And so I want to have these hanging upside down and in a little groove that they can slide into and rest like that. So uh, what I want to do is, first of all, find out the size of these handles. I've got my uh, Tac Life calipers here. 36 millimeters, who knows what that means. Inches, there we go. All right, so looks like uh, 1.5 inches. So I'm gonna do more like a one and a three quarter. Should be just fine. And let's make sure this one is the same here. Yeah, one and three quarter inch ought to be just fine for that. I want to make sure that there is plenty of material here to support the weight of this. So let's just see what we got here. You know, I bet if we came over an inch and a half would be just fine. Okay, so if we come over about an inch and a half and then move over an inch and three quarters there, it should give us plenty of support. And then I'm going to move over once again another inch and a half. So inch and a half. And then I will do the other groove right there. Just put my square here. This is a four and three quarter inch that I want to cut out of this. Okay, so hopefully what I have left here is enough material that if this is sitting in here to this point right here, it won't uh, be hitting the wall with the back. So anyway, I'm gonna make two of these grooves. And as you'll notice, there's some extra space over here. I've got plans for that as well. To finish getting these two notches cut out, I'm going to use the uh, jigsaw here. Well, I thought I would do a test fit here, and it works really well like this. But I started thinking, this might not be a good idea. What if I'm sanding or kicking up a whole bunch of dust, and the battery is not on one of the tools? It's gonna have a, a bunch of dust getting in here. So then I thought, well, maybe I just better try it this way, and I think it's gonna work just fine either direction. So. Uh, I kind of like this way better even, so it's going to keep the dust out of those battery compartments. Now that I know this is going to fit well in here, either direction, either upright or like this, I have all this space over here. One of the things I use the most in my shop is Torx head screws. It's the star bit on top, and I have probably uh, 12 of these or more of each size but they're scattered around the shop and hard to find. So I thought, what if I uh, make a couple of rows that I can store these Torx head drivers 
and not lose them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have a uh, 17 64ths bit because that makes sense. And I'm gonna put a couple rows of uh, holes in here that I can use to store these bits. I guess we better make this semi attractive looking. So let's come over a touch and just make a little line. I think three ought to do it here. Okay, and so basically I'll be able to just stick these like that in there and I can pull them out whenever I need to use that size bit. So, and what I may do is dedicate this for, uh, for instance, uh, T15, T20, T25. So, like here's a, a, a T20, I can come in and just store it there. Now that I have the top complete here, I want to get the French cleat portion installed. So, I need a couple pieces of cleat here. Let's go with two and a half inch, ought to do it. Two and a half inch. So I'm gonna cut those for the cleat and then I'll be cutting some triangular pieces for support. I have this scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood that is just under four inches. And so I've set my uh, square to a 45. And I'm just gonna run this out till it meets that corner there. There we go. And then I can just pull this out here and mark the other edge of this. There we go. Hopefully that's two equal triangles. I'm gonna cut those out for the support pieces on uh, this shelf. Someday I'll make a cart so that my saw doesn't rest on the ground all the time. So I'm just locking this down to 45. So I can then line this up and get it cut here at 45. Assembly should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna flip this over and I want a cleat piece to go here on the edge. And then I want a triangular piece to go here to, uh, to lock that into place on the shelf. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the cleat on here first. I'm gonna pre-drill. I think I'll have to bring this close to the edge to, to get that. So I've got this cleat where I want it. Just do a little pre-drill. Okay, now I'm gonna use some Tight Bond 2 wood glue here just to make sure this thing really stays on well. Don't need a whole lot of it here. And then lastly, I'm just using a couple of two inch Torx screws here. I think I'm gonna put one screw in here and one from the top, and that should be more than enough to hold this brace on here. Oop. Yeah, my other battery is on the charger. I think I'm gonna make the pretty side face outward. So I'm gonna flip this back over and work here on the top side and just put a another pre-drill hole right here so that I know it's gonna be locked down really well. Probably could have put some glue on that, but I honestly don't see any issues from this point on of it ever coming loose. Cool, all right. Let me get the other side done and we will give this thing a test. Okay, here we go. Nice. Definitely sits on there well. 
I went ahead and uh, did a little extra sanding on these edges because I know I'm going to be reaching for this a lot and didn't want to hit any sharp edges. Well, let's go ahead and see how well these fit on here. Pretty good there. Go all the way up or go closer there. And then this one I've got the battery on. And that fits just fine. A little bit of a tip there, but really nothing too serious. Okay, and then I've also got a few of these Torx. So here's a T25. Just stick back here. And then a couple of, uh, let's, what is this? T20 and T20. Anyway, I just thought it would be nice to keep track of those as well. So, all right, well, it works well with both the batteries and without the batteries, which is good. So how easy is it to reach in here and grab these out? Yeah, no problem. So that one could be a little tippy. wonder turn this way. Hey, there we go. That's even better. Check that out. <laughs> and now I can just reach in there and get it as it's supposed to be. Cool. I like that a lot. There's another addition to the French cleat wall. I'm glad I just figured out that I should turn them this way because that makes it so much easier to just reach up and grab it the way I'm gonna be using it and not worry about having to flip it around or flip it over. So I definitely recommend uh, designing it for this purpose right here. And I, although I have these Torx in here, these holes are fit for any other size bit that I want to stick in there. Uh, I just felt like I should keep track of some of my Torx drivers there. Well, if you have found this French cleat drill and impact driver shelf handy or helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share this video with anyone you know that is looking to store tools like this on their wall. Thank you so much for watching. Write a comment down below. I'd love to read it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.